what are the central ideas of jay prakash uh, narayan um sometimes you get the ideas of a an ideologue or a thinker of uh, from the way uh, he likes and admires a particular society jp's ideal world um you can be understood to uh, jp's description of naga society i found jp's description of naga society uh, brings more clarity than uh, what is written on uh, jp's political and economic uh, ideals when did he talk about naga society on 30th january 1965 30th jan is gandhi's death anniversary he speech he made a speech in patna on naga society uh, he became he got familiarity with naga society because he was a part of a three member peace mission to nagaland nagaland at one time was involved in secessionist struggle and they resorted to violence to reach their political ends so it was in that context jp visited nagaland and there he saw naga society he particularly liked village self rule in naga society So what did he like uh, gandhi used to used often to talk of village self rule if you want to see village self rule in practice go to nagaland the way that villages run their affairs the strength they they display is truly admirable so he admires this aspect of naga society what did he find there the government of nagaland wants the village council of kohima to give it land they say the government cannot take over the land without the consent of the village council the village council is so powerful that it has to give permission to the government to use its land in a particular way jp asks but what is the situation in other states the government can uproot village after village without taking anyone's permission so village is something uh very very important very very important who has control over uh, decision making control over resources and jp thinks this is a part of an ideal polity
And next he describes he says how villagers cooperate to bring common property into existence he gives this example near the town of mokong chum is a village named omma about 4000 people are resident there there is a very big church this is the church it has a seating capacity of 5000 you will be astonished to learn that the church was built entirely by the voluntary labor of villagers voluntary labor of the villagers they used no material not any expertise from outside and jp says not even this church even high schools were built by the villagers themselves so church was not an exception he thinks this is how people should develop their villages and uh, that requires different attitudes towards labor jp says a naga even if he has a ba or ma degree does not consider physical labor to be beneath his dignity the deficiencies that one finds in educated elsewhere in india are absent there if a boy comes home on holiday he would happily help his parents in the fields or in the housework when we gandhians try to teach under the rubric of basic education what gand is already a part of teaching in nagaland the greatest quality of nagas is the dignity of labor in daily life which we can learn from so people are voluntarily contributing to labor and there is a sense of equality okay so he wants villages like that with economic decentralization as well as political decentralization and people working with equality is what he wants and he extends this idea of decentralization even to uh union state relations uh like villages are to be stronger between the union and the states states also states should be stronger okay and uh, union he sees it as for some minimal functions related to coordination so villages are strong states are strong but different levels have different functions the functions to maintain the coordination 
so this is how power should be decentralized power here meant both economic as well as political so what did he think about the union state relations okay he says if bihar had its own currency and bengal its own imagine what confusion would arise issues such as defense and foreign affairs must be the responsibility of the center however all other subjects must be within the control of the states the situation today is such that without assistance from the center the state the states are not able to function function for schools the center has to give them money so jp finds the political system as heavily centralized and this should be changed and when such change takes place secessionist demands also won't won't be there okay uh, so he told nagas i kept on telling the nagas that there is no need for you to demand separate nation since you can be fully free within india this is what he was promising to the nagas and uh, he thinks that for any state maximum decentralization maximum power is ideal and so he says the giving up of certain rights to the center is not done to permit india to subjugate the provinces rather to safeguard the union of india so let the center maintain unity and all else or to the maximum possible let states have power okay so within this um type of thinking he gave a framework of panchayat raj institutions in this book a plea for the reconstruction of indian polity 1959 he suggested five levels of polity village block and district this is three levels plus state and center two he found that all these levels were weakened and only center was powerful he said the gram panchayat should be integrated into panchayat samiti he wanted block level also and the samiti should be elected by the gram panchayats and the district councils of the state should come together and then you have district council the district councils of the state should come together to create a state assembly the state assemblies would bring into being the lok sabha in the present arrangement you have panchayat raj district block and village and then state coming from different constituencies and union coming from different constituencies so this is one kind this is another and this is another there is no connection between assembly and the district councils there is no connection between lok sabha and the assemblies but j prakash narayan in 1959 thought of things differently district councils of the state would come together to create a state assembly the state assemblies would bring lok sabha so 
so it was it is like writing a new constitution um but i don't think what is important is not the connection between panchayat raj and the state or the connection between the um, assemblies and lok sabha what is important is where does the power lie jp wanted very high degree of decentralization okay this is about politics and economically he believed in sharing and cooperation okay workers would be involved in or there would be joint ownership or the political institutions would be involved at various levels be it village level or a block level or a district level so it is not that politically there is decentralization and economically there is centralization jp wanted decentralization of both economic and as well as political because he basically believed that um uh there is excessive centralization okay this is what he believed the most important issue this time is that of the absoluteness of congress power concentration of every form of power must be destroyed this he said on the eve of 1957 elections okay there is some constancy in his thinking and he said a month before declaration of emergency the present all pervading corruption has its roots in politics and power the chief task for the people is to prevent power from being corrupted in the future and how do you do this the aim of sarvodaya is to diffuse political and economic power and decentralize the politico economic structure okay democracy doesn't have much meaning when power is concentrated okay it 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 depends on voting but voters are manipulated by powerful and centrally controlled parties with the aid of high finance and diabolically clever methods and super media so uh, these are uh, observations of jp on post independent india power centralization corruption and manipulation so these were thoughts of jp and that is why he didn't believe much in the institutions he believed that people should be good and for that to happen there should be right education so this is a movement from rajniti to lokniti movement from state to society okay so this is what he says law cannot come into effect without public opinion to enforce it legislation without conversion first is a dead letter land reforms is an example and he says this is a problem with the demo parliamentary democracy you make a law without changing people and so that is not going to 
uh, put in practice. So he says, it is not institutions, not laws, not political systems, not constitutions, which create good people. For that, you require a widespread process of education, understood in the widest sense of the word. Education does not mean academic education, but the improving of human beings through service, love, examples, friendship, reasoning, and argument. So he is thinking you should create good people and through that good society. And this leads to good quality. Okay. So this is dependence on people and their character rather as opposed to government, law, power, coercion. JP is for this and these to him need to be suspected. Okay. For example, one very serious problem was there from decoids. For more than 20 years, decoids had been operating out of ravines and jungles of Madhya Pradesh. Repeated attempts to flush them. Out with troops and aerial bombardment failed. Okay. And see what JP did. Declaring any heart can be changed <clears throat> if the right approach is made. Narayan entered parallels with them. He convinced them the only way you will earn peace of mind is by changing your lives and purifying yourselves. Okay. Like in Vinoba's Bhudan movement, this is about volunteerism, creating good people. You know, 400 of them laid down their arms at his feet and they were assured of fair trials. Though charged with murder, they are given only imprisonment <clears throat> rather than death sentence. So, hmm, this is the approach of Gandhi, you know, Bhave. Uh, dependence on Society, Satyagraha, Personal Transformation. Okay. And when asked uh, if they are, uh, if the leader of the decoyed gangs could stand for the parliament after release from prison, JP said, he won't be in a good company because he would be a reformed decoy. We can understand what JP thought of people who are in Lok Sabha or in Parliament. Okay, because these are these will be reformed decoys. And others were not so reformed. So, these kind of ideas are put under what is called Sarvodaya. 
Sarvodaya, Sarvodaya meant this came from uh, Ruskin's unto this last, unto this last. It is that book which inspired Gandhi. So Gandhi gave this term Sarvodaya, which is to uh, take into consideration the well-being of the last man. <clears throat> Okay. Vinava Bhave wrote, Sarvodaya does not mean good government or majority rule. It means um, freedom from government. It means decentralization of power. Okay. So, Sarvodaya included decentralization. Harnessing positive nature of man because of which doing things voluntarily. Okay. So, there is some similarity between Marx and Gandhi in their attitude towards the state. Both believe that the state should finally wither away. So, Sarvodaya not only waiting for the withering away of the state, starts the work of not depending on the state in the first place. Okay. So, <clears throat> this is what JP believed in. Uh, so, he left uh, party politics left party politics because party was only to get power. But in the fag end of his life, he got involved in party politics and instrumental uh, in defeating Indira Gandhi um, by uniting many opposition parties. JP gave a call in 1975 for a total revolution. What is this concept of total revolution? JP in 1975, though others around him were interested in overthrowing only Indira Gandhi, JP said, we shouldn't stop there. This is for total revolution, not just change in the power. Okay. This concept of total revolution came from Uh, we know Bhave, who said in 1960s uh, to mold a new man to change human life and create a new world. Nothing but total revolution. So, uh, definitely was any, uh, was there any effort uh, made in the direction of total revolution? Very little. Because he was aged and sick to die soon. Okay. But this just shows that even in the fag end of his life, he was not tired of radical slogans and radical thinking. Okay. Uh, but in 1975, he only managed to lead the people who are not at all interested in total revolution, but only interested in getting power for themselves. So, uh, there was no revolution at all. But that was the man and his thoughts. <clears throat> 